A lot of people have these dreams. A lot of times they're just fleeting. The fact that I focus all my energy into actually making it happen is why it happens. I shouldn't even be here. And I am. This is the kind of guy, whatever he puts his mind to, you think he's going to get it done. It's a great story regardless of what happens because he's a great person. To understand where Nate Boyer wants to go, you have to know where he's been. In 2004, Boyer was rudderless. He had the drive but needed direction. He found it in images in Time magazine of a crisis 8,000 miles from his Northern California home in a refugee camp in war-torn Sudan. Maybe I just allowed myself to like be affected by it for once instead of just looking at it as a photograph. I thought about the actual people. Something inside was telling me, you have to go over there. You have to help these people somehow. Then 23, Boyer paid his own way to Africa and talked his way onto a United Nations flight to a refugee camp in Darfur, where he would work as a volunteer. That was the first time I've really been around death. And you're right there. The men are either murdered or out fighting. You know, the women have, almost all of them have been raped. The kids, have, some of these kids are missing limbs and are just maimed in the, in, in the face. But at the same time, they're like smiling and playing and they're happy. <laughs> After two months of service, he felt obligated to do more. Maybe you should serve your country, you know what I mean? Maybe you should serve the place that's giving you all this stuff. You need to earn you know, your right to complain about something. In 2005, Boyer joined the Army in a special 18-month program designed to apply directly for Special Forces training. More than 140 soldiers began that class. Eleven finished. Among them, Nate Boyer. The Special Forces motto is De Oppresso Libera, which means to free the oppressed. That alone spoke to me because it was like, this is what I want to do. I want to fight for the people that can't fight for themselves. After serving for five years around the globe, including a tour in Iraq. Boyer joined the reserves and took on a new role as a 29-year-old college freshman at the University of Texas. There, he attended an open tryout and despite never having played organized football, made the Longhorn roster as a walk-on where he saw an opportunity at Long Snapper. And I said, uh, have you ever deep snapped a day in your life? And he said, no, sir. And he had a ball in his hand. He said, but I'm going to take this with me and I'm going to snap every day. And when I come back, I'm going to be your deep snapper. That summer, while deployed with the National Guard, Boyer taught himself to long snap by watching YouTube videos. It's amazing to me that a guy had never thought about deep snapping, never talked to a deep snapper, never looked at deep snapping, never been involved in the kicking game in a really a two-month period could come back and be as good as he was at, at that pass. Boyer would become the Longhorns full-time long snapper, earning a full athletic scholarship while spending his summers overseas in places like Afghanistan. I'd spend about three and a half months there, literally jump on a plane, come back, you know, trade in my body armor and my helmet for my pads and my football helmet. Last summer, I got back the day before training camp started. So I just literally hit the ground running. We'd be in the middle of two a days, and they'd be griping about too much practice and how hot it is in Austin, Texas. And I'd say, Nate, come here. Tell them about sitting in a foxhole at 117 degrees with 50 pounds of armor and a, a helmet on with people shooting at you. And he'd get up and say, you guys are clueless. Oh my gosh, quit being babies. Who else could Texas choose to carry the American flag out of the tunnel before each home game? When I'm running out, I'm thinking about the guys over there right now, and I'm thinking about my buddies that are gone, and that those that came back from other wars that didn't receive that kind of welcome, a crowd cheering like that. It's a sound he hopes to find on the professional level. Before earning his degree in May, 
He declared for the NFL draft. Called some guys that I trusted. I called back. Too short, too slow, too old, not big enough to protect. Um, so I said, Nate, uh, are you ready? And I gave him all the negative things I said. And he said, that's what I figured. He said, Coach, I'm still going to make the team. You know that. He went undrafted. But minutes after the seventh round was complete, the phone rang. How you doing, Coach? Yeah, hell yeah. Let's do it. Well, Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Making the 34-year-old Boyer the oldest undrafted rookie free agent the team had ever signed. We're a team of a bunch of gritty guys, you know, and, and everybody's kind of got that chip on their shoulder that they can prove it and they can overcome the odds and all that. And he's another living example of that, you know, so I think his addition would be uh, extraordinary and, and fitting. Well, I've come a long way in the few short years I've been snapping and playing football. Like, I'm not ever going to be the fastest guy out there or the most athletic or the best, even at my position, but I'm always going to be working. The long snapper is a long shot to make the Seahawks roster, but so what? He's always been a long shot. For those guys that think that they got nothing to offer or that they'll never do anything important again, it's just not true. It doesn't matter how old you are or where you came from or what happened to you. It's what you're doing now. The one thing I want people to know about me is that I'm never going to quit. There's just no way you're going to break me.